When you think about it, we take a lot of things for granted when we write Swift code. For example, if I had in here a uh, func example, and then said let result equals four is less than five, we'd expect result to be set to true. Four is less than five. The developers of Swift and LLVM, which is the larger compiler project behind Swift, they've already done all the hard work of checking whether this calculation, four is less than five, is actually true. So we don't have to worry about it. Now what Swift does really well is extend functionality into lots of places using protocols and protocols extensions. For example, we know that four is less than five is true because we can compare two integers and say, yeah, uh, this one comes before this one or not or whatever we want to. And Swift extends that functionality to whole arrays of integers. We can compare all the numbers in an array and then say which one should come before all the rest of them. As a result, we can sort the array. And so in Swift, we'd expect this kind of code to just work. Uh, let values is one, five, three, six, two, nine, dot sorted. And then we can go over that in 50Y and say, uh, let's have a list of those values, ID of backslash dot self, and then text string of dollar zero. And we just assume that's gonna work. There we are, one, two, three, uh, five, six, nine. So it works exactly as expect. And we don't have to tell sorted how it should work because it understands how arrays of integers work. It can compare individual numbers, so it can compare a whole array of numbers. Now consider a struct like this one. There's a struct called user, which is identifiable, has an ID, UUID, plus a first name, string, and a last name, string. Now we can make an array of those users and use them inside a list. We could say, uh, let users is an array of user uh, with a first name, Arnold, so, uh, last name, Rimmer, and then a user with first name, Christine, last name, Kochansky, and then user, first name, David, last name, Lister. And then to place it, that into a uh, uh, list, we'll just say a list of our users, like this, the user coming in and then say show a text view with uh, let's say the uh, user first name capital N and then user last name last name like that and when it plays back we're going to see Rimmer, Kachansky and Lister my mistake Lister sorry Red Dwarf fans <laughs> there we go Lister and that's gonna work because we've, we've made the user strut conform to identifiable, so it'll just work with the list directly. But how about if we wanted to sort these users in some kind of order? And if we modify this to say, actually create my users array and then sort it, that code won't work. Swift does not understand what sorted means in this context. Doesn't know if you mean to sort by first name or by last name or by both or by something else or who knows what. Now, previously I showed you how we could pass a custom closure to sorted. We could say when we're sorting, I want to sort using uh, zero dot last name is less than dollar one dot last name, and now we're going to sort last name first. So we have uh, Kachansky, Lister, and Rimmer, and that absolutely works but it's just not ideal for two main reasons. First, this is what we call model data, by which I mean it, it's stuff that affects the user struct. It belongs to this data here, and this struct and its properties, they're what we call our data model, the data behind our program, and in a well-developed app, we don't really want to tell the model how to sort itself. You know, our, our Swift UI code, this represents the layout of our code, not the data. And so ideally, uh, our data knows what sorting means. Second, what happens if we have users elsewhere in our program? We have to sort them in multiple places. You might copy and paste this closure a few times before realizing you're just making a problem for yourself. You're having to sort 
the same way in every single place, copy and pasting your code in every single place. If you need to change your sort algorithm to have last name and first name, for example, you've got to find every place sorting took place and then, and then fix it. So it's problematic. Swift has a better solution, which is that we can have a, a sorted algorithm built in to our user. Now, when we had our array of integers, we could say sorted with no extra work, no custom closure being passed in here because Swift knows how to compare arrays of integers. It's built right in. In coding terms, this happens because int integers conforms to the comparable protocol, which means it defines a function that takes two integers and returns true if the first should be before the second. Now we can make our custom types also conform to comparable, and when we do, we'll get that same sorted method that works with no extra parameters. And this takes two steps. Step one, we want to add the comparable conformance for our user, comparable. And then step two, make a method inside there called less than that takes two users and returns true if the first should come before the second. So we'll say static func, less than, left hand side's a user, right hand side's a user, returns bool, and return lhs.lastName is less than rhs.lastName. That's not a lot of code, right? But there is still things to unpack. First up, yes, this method is just called less than, right? It's a, it's a less than operator, that's the name of our function, and it's a job of this function to decide uh, whether one object, the left hand side, should come before the other one, the right hand side. So we're adding functionality to existing operator here. You know, you can say four is less than five, or hello is less than world, but now you can say is user one less than user two. This is operator overloading, just in our custom version here. It's both a blessing and a curse, trust me. Uh, second, I was reading it out, but LHS and RHS, their coding convention for left hand side and right hand side, because the less than operator has one up around the left and one on the right. Blah, four is less than blah, five, for example. Third, this thing must return a Boolean. We must decide whether one object comes before another object in the sorting order. Uh, there is no room for is the same here. That's a whole other operator uh, called equals equals, which comes from equatable. That's not here, this is just comparable. Is it less than or greater than something else? And it must be marked static. This thing belongs to user struct directly rather than a single instance of that struct. Internally, the logic's pretty simple. We just go ahead and pass it on to the string. Is string A less than string B? That's it. Um, of course, you can add more logic here. Are they the same? Maybe do a first name comparison or whatever. Um, but here, last name's more than enough, so we can do that just fine here. But ultimately, you must return true or false. Now, what you can't see here is that conforming to comparable gives access to greater than uh, as well. We get that automatically because it's the opposite of less than, right? <laughs> it's a, it just flips the boolean basically. So now we have comparable working here, we can go ahead and remove our custom closure for the sorted call. We can just say sorted. And that resolves the problems we had before because we now isolate our model functionality neatly inside the struct itself. It now understands what sorting looks like by itself. And we no longer have to copy that custom closure everywhere we want to sort stuff. We can just use sorted everywhere, safe in the knowledge that if we ever change the algorithm, that everywhere in our code will also change.